So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology, iPhone 13 Pro versus Galaxy S24 speed test. Let's begin with a boot up in three, two, go. Now we're coming off the heels of the iPhone 13 versus the Galaxy S24. And some people were saying, you know, that's not a fair comparison. Why don't you do the 13 Pro? Why don't you do phones that are actually, you know, more in the line with that phone? And I would say for a two year upgrade, this would be more in line. You know, you have a 120 Hertz on both. That's faster to boot up on the S24. You have a 120 Hertz on both. You have top tier kind of feel on both of them and triple cameras on both of them. But the Galaxy S24 is gonna win it out on the boot up test. So when it comes to unlocking these phones, we do have Face ID for the iPhone 13 Pro and it works as good as it always has. It's a little de-notch on this phone, it looks kind of big now compared to, you know, the Galaxy S24 and compared to like the newer phones. Also, I never thought these bezels were thick until now. They kind of look thicker now because all these new phones are reducing their bezels even more. And these were already reduced bezels versus some bezels of the years before the phones that came out before this. But unlocking the Galaxy S24 only requires a press like that. So. Um, some people say it's less convenient and it misses more. I personally think if you set up two fingers, like let's say you use your thumb here, set it up twice and you'll be good to go. I don't usually ever miss really on the S24. You can even unlock this without looking at it. Also, somebody mentioned, why don't you show the face unlock for the Galaxy? Well, there you go. I don't typically compare the face unlock because this is not their secure method. They even tell you when you're setting up face unlock, for more security, use the fingerprint. So definitely um, faster to get in the Galaxy. In terms of speed, it's faster to get into the Galaxy S24. So if you're considering a trade in here, um, you're gonna be quicker on the S24, but you could argue that there's more convenience, maybe when your hands are dirty or greasy, or at you know certain situations where your face ID just more convenient for you. In terms of software, we're looking at 17.4.1 for the speed test and One UI 6.1. Um, there's no developer options on anything like that. It's gonna be all basically stock. The only thing I did for the Galaxy is I did enable, uh, disable the double swipe gesture via good lock, which you can find in the Galaxy store. So let's get into the app test. Okay, but before we go into those apps, generally scrolling through both phones, you will see basically the same type of performance here. Um, the iPhone is butter smooth here on the 13 Pro, even now, because it retains the promotion. Promotion is a big deal for the iPhone, I feel like now. And if you get an iPhone without promotion, you're kind of doing yourself a disservice if you want the most smooth iPhone performance. All right, guys, so everything is closed out for both phones. Let's go ahead and get into weather here, three, two, go. You can see faster for the Samsung. Let's go into Play Store, App Store. Somebody said you can't compare Play Store. Yeah, I know they're not the same apps, but that's their that's their app stores for each platform. So I'm gonna compare them, like it or not. Let's go into games. You've seen right there. This is the stores you're gonna go to for each to get things done and to download apps. Set up out of there, you'll see animations pretty similar on both. Let's go into calculator. You could see about the same. If I swipe up out of there, pretty much the same. Let's go into Best Buy and you'll see that the Samsung is quicker there. Somebody was telling me their story about how one of their friends had a, in the comments, um, one of their friends had a Galaxy and they had an iPhone and their iPhone performs better. Um, in my experience here, Samsung has gotten snappier than ever. And I do think that the Samsung phone now is actually snappier and quicker in most respects than the iPhone. So that's something to keep in mind. The iPhone is actually smoother. I think its consistency is a little bit better still, but the Samsung now has, look at how fast it opened. It has really fast performance. Even the 15 Pro um, would be pretty close here to the 13 Pro and the Galaxy S24. So even though this is a two year phone, the 13 Pro was basically, I think peak iPhone. It was really good still is also the iphone 13 series in general was pretty much peak iphone to me you can see galaxy s24 
not and i'm not saying peak like they don't make good phones anymore the 15 pro and pro max are some of the biggest changes in years and i found those to be amazing phones as well but if you have a 13 pro 13 pro max and you haven't upgraded yet you're not really left behind in the dust you're actually okay right now you're still pretty modern here on these phones let's go into subway surf and the game did launch first there on the 13 pro for the previous game now we got the samsung that launched a little faster um, overall when playing casual games no major differences dead trigger 2 and let's see what happens here i think that was the iphone let's get into the game here i think this was on a different stage was it yeah they were on a different stage when actually in the game though it's going to come down to the gpus and which is gonna stutter more day to day. I do think the Samsung has more efficiency though, so you probably get a little bit toastier on a 13 Pro when heavy gaming, but if you're using a case, you're never gonna notice. Let's go into Temper Run 2, see what happens here. And you'll see the load bar going faster there for the right, and Samsung is in. It's cool now, because back in the day, man, you only got a Samsung if you wanted all the features, but you know, man, if I got the iPhone, it would have been smoother. Now, you kind of get either and have the best of both worlds. Or you can just get both. If that's something, if you want to get a Samsung phone and an iPhone, and just play around with both of them. Just kind of get the best of both worlds. But what I'm trying to get at is that if you wanted to buy an, a Samsung now, um, you can definitely do that and have good performance. Somebody said I was... Um, I'm getting too biased towards Samsung. No, we're only, it only seems to you like that because I'm talking about the newer phone in this comparison. When I compare the 15 Pro, it's gonna be a little closer, but we're talking about an upgrade here because when, you, when I compare these, I'm doing it with the intentions of discussing, like if you wanna trade or sell your 13 Pro and come to the Galaxy S24. That's how I, I create the video um, when I'm doing these comparisons because that's what I would do. I would consider in my mind, should I give Samsung my uh, my give my Samsung my iPhone, or I wasn't logged in there. Should I give uh, Samsung my iPhone 4, 13 Pro for the Galaxy uh, S24? That's what I'm considering. I'm gonna scrap Instagram because I wasn't logged in. I was talking too much. Let's go into Geekbench 6, and you'll see pretty similar mm, 3D Mark. And let's go over here to, where's a Wildlife Extreme? Wildlife Extreme right there. It's gonna be, that's the test we're gonna do. And we'll go over here to Speed Test Net. And you'll see faster on the right. And InShot, and faster on the right. We're actually gonna do a video test towards the end though. So overall, I would say iPhone had a couple games, a couple apps, but the Samsung generally seemed to snap these apps faster. All right, so let's go back through the applications and see what we get now with the promotion, every iPhone with promotion is going to look and feel better. This one actually has six gigs of RAM on the iPhone 13 Pro. So that's two more than the iPhone 13. Now someone said that over time, these apps build up in the background. They tend to take up more resources, which is true, especially if you've been having these apps on your phone for years, they do tend to take up storage and space and resources. But overall, six gigs of RAM definitely allows the 13 Pro to perform better than the 13. So this is why I say, if you're going to be keeping an iPhone a long time, it's probably worth the couple extra hundred dollars to get the Pro model if you're like one of those five year, six year users. Now this one does have 12 gigs of RAM. It is, it's also a newer phone. So of course it probably doesn't take up as much space. Some people like to say, yeah, try that Samsung phone in a year, in two years, and watch what happens. Y you know, this is not 2014, bro. This is 2024. These phones have rocket fast CPUs, rocket fast GPUs, much better optimization. It's not gonna be that much different in one year or two years. You know, that's why we can look at this phone today, the 13 Pro, and see not a major difference. Same would be the case with the S24. This is a top tier flagship and you could see with the 12 gigs of RAM, it did really fantastic right there. Okay, so here's our benchmark results and the Samsung wins it out in the multi 
but loses in the single core, which is a little bit strange. Um, didn't expect that, but overall, the Samsung wins out in the multi-core score. Um, pretty close there in that test. Let's see what they can do in their wildlife extreme, though. I'll be back when they're done testing the graphics. Now here, Samsung has even, even been beating the 15 Pro, so I don't expect the 13 Pro to win it out here. I'll be back when they're done to see what kind of frame rates they average, how much better they are than other devices. Stay tuned. Okay, so the Samsung is finished and absolutely wrecks the iPhone 13 Pro here. 45, 40, uh, 45, 44 with a 2751. Again, it could come off like I'm being biased because I said it wrecks. Well, it does. Um, the Samsung lost though in Geekbench, so the iPhone won there, but here is where you're really pushing it a little bit more with the frame rates. You can see, look at the difference. 27.21 on the Samsung, 16.5. Now, if there's a game or application they don't have on Android that they have on iPhone that you want, that's not going to matter to you at all. But if they're, if the games you're playing and the stuff you're doing is pretty popular across both platforms, then the Samsung is going to way outperform the iPhone 13 Pro. So if you did a trade-in for this phone and got like 700, I don't know what they're doing. Was it like six, seven hundred dollars off? I don't know the exact trading values, but it was pretty big at the start of the pre-order. You can get this phone for a really low price point and get much better performance if you're a gamer. So yeah, the Samsung wins it out there in 3D Mark. All right, so let's go ahead and run a internet speed test. You'll see and they're both gonna be on the same server. We'll see if the iPhone can pull in better download. I don't think it's gonna happen, but we'll see. Um, also, keep in mind that even though the iPhone doesn't have the best multi-core performance anymore or GPU performance anymore, it's still very well supported and still does very well for most people and it still feels like a premium flagship smartphone. So it's actually still recommended if you're looking at picking one up at a discount here in 2024. Let's hit go. But when I talk about should you upgrade, if you're looking for performance enhancements and you wanted to go to an S24, you are going to get those. You can see even much faster on the download speeds. And again, these are the same servers. So Samsung can actually pull in stronger Wi-Fi performance than the iPhone 13 Pro. Now on the upload, this doesn't really change too much, but it should be about the same, if not slightly better for the Samsung. So yeah, better there. And I typically find Samsung does a little bit better in the 5G performance as well. Okay guys, so here we are. We're gonna go ahead and do a render 4K60 at one minute. So it's not a super long clip, but should still be enough to go ahead and allow us to see what happens here. So 4K 60 FPS, and this is at the MOV format. So we're gonna change this to MP4. You could see on the Samsung, even with the same one minute clip for some reason, it's more Maybe it's the way they shoot on either platform. Let's just hit save and see which could render this out faster. So the iPhone looked like it was in the lead, but the Samsung is jumping out in front here at converting this video, rendering it out. So you can see we're jumping way ahead here for the Samsung, 40% versus 24. Samsung's gonna take this one. You could see it right there. So even though it was a little bit bigger of a clip, it's still at 4K 60. You see faster here on the right. Now again, Apple does have a really great iMovie application. So the actual experience and LumaFusion is on both platforms, LumaFusion, but this is a $30 application. You can see that the video render finished first on the Samsung. So we're gonna sit around and wait for a second for the iPhone 13 Pro. But if you're looking to do some video rendering, I think that both are really good in this area. They both have really good applications, but the Samsung with that multi-core GPU score might actually take the cake here. So keep that in mind. I'll be back when this is done. And the iPhone finally finishes and gives us an ad. But at the end of the day, the iPhone definitely took a good 20 seconds, 30 seconds longer, and that's just on one minute. I wonder how long it would get if we did like a 10 minute video. So the Samsung has taken the win here in this speed test. Um, it was probably expected, but it, the iPhone 13 Pro though, I still think is a great used option if you're looking to get one of these premium iPhones 
at a cheaper price. It's still got a couple years under its belt left, maybe even three years. Um, but if you're looking for a really fast performance, these newer Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 phones, along with the A17 Pro, iPhone 15 Pros, those are much faster now. So do keep that in mind. If you were deciding to do an upgrade to the S24, I don't think you'll be disappointed if you're open-minded enough to go ahead and switch over to Samsung. And I'm not saying you're closed-minded if you don't. Maybe some people just can't make that switch because they're investing into the ecosystem. Um, also, if you pick up the iPhone 13 Pro, I think you'll be pretty happy here still in 2024. So both are great. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here. I'll catch you on the next episode. Be sure to be well and peace.